I've now reached the second to last chapter of Maltman's book, The Trinity and the Kingdom of God. And <clears throat> I am just continually frustrated with Maltman's conflation of monotheism and conceiving God as a divine monad. Um, his use of words like monotheism in the place of monadic is thoroughly frustrating. Um, take this as he talks about Arius in the second to last chapter. Um, if I can find it. Arianism is monotheistic Christianity in its purest form. It's just uh, a really idiosyncratic and frustrating use of language. Um, Maltman sounds confused. Uh, let me just go through some of the notes I made earlier from the previous chapters. I'll bring up my Word document. Um, so take for existence, uh, for, for instance, his Christian panentheism said some things about that in, his la in my last update. Um, he talks of God in a kind of located way, like a spatially located, located way. He talks of God, um, an outside movement of God and an inward movement of God. And he seems to be confused by these words outward and inward in that he kind of locates God in space, whether wittingly or unwittingly. And what he says, if I, if I understood him correctly, is that creation has to be inward because there can't be anything apart from God because then he wouldn't be omnipresent. Or there can't be anything outside of God. There's that word again, outside of God, because then he wouldn't be omnipresent. And I think Maltman's got confused with language here rather than um, anything else because surely God can be omnipresent if he creates something and simultaneously fills, for want of a better word, that space. Um, but then Maltman seems to adopt this kind of view of omnipresence as spatial location, which again isn't uncontroversial. For example, I think it's Richard Swinburne talks about the attribute of omnipresent being um, something along the lines of causally efficacious in all points in, in space. Um, so it's not that God fills space in any way, in a kind of penentheist way, but rather that he has um, some form of control or uh, knowledge of what's going on in that space. Um, that might be a mistake, perfectly happy to grant that, but nonetheless, Maltman's language just continually trips him up. Uh, whether that's like a problem with his German translated to English or not, I don't know. Um, but since the creation is necessary for God on Maltman's view, um, then he also extends that to the incarnation and says that the incarnation is required to perfect creation. And so if the creation is an essential aspect of God as love, then so too is the incarnation, because the incarnation is required for the perfection of that creation. Um, I put all that stuff in a syllogism, uh, and it seems highly dubious. Like, Maltman kind of asserts uh, the argument, which at its base is valid, but I doubt it sounds. So the syllogism that I transposed Maltman's argument into goes like this. One, if the Logos becomes incarnate only in order to reconcile people to God, then the bond between God and man in Christ will be dissolved once reconciliation has been completed. Given um, position A, which is the incarnation of the Son of God was made necessary by man's sin, it was necessary for his reconciliation. Um, so given position A, where has it gone now? The Logos becomes incarnate only in order to reconcile people to God. Therefore, says Maltman, the bond between God and man in Christ will be dissolved once reconciliation has been completed. But why think that premise one, the if-then statement, 
Um, it's true. Why well, think that if the Logos becomes incarnate only in order to reconcile people to God, then the bond between God and man in Christ will be dissolved once reconciliation has been completed? Why well, think that? Long sentence. Um, Maltman provides no reason for thinking premise one to be true. He simply asserts it. Why shouldn't the believer, believer continue to be dependent on the sacrifice and life of Christ after reconciliation has taken place? And what does Maltman mean by saying that once reconciliation has been completed, Christ is then superfluous? Again, I wish that Maltman would clarify his language in his terms, what he means by obscure language about spatial location and necessity. Um, it, it's just sloppy theology. Um, it just makes... It's lazy, and he should have taken the time to articulate himself. Um, it's frustrating, but there you go.